Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you guys my WWE 205 Live review for July 4th, 2017, the 4th of July episode. I hope everybody had a good 4th of July. I certainly did, so I do have some videos there to catch up on, so I'm going to start with 205 Live. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. I'm not really sure what, sure what to expect out of 205 Live. Um, this is kind of the go-home show for the Cruiserweight Championship match between Neville and Akio Tozawa because they have a Cruiserweight title match coming up, so I wonder what they're going to do with that. Um, and I'm just going to get right into this episode. I'm going to watch the show, and after each match or se segment, I'm going to come on here and talk about it, so let's just get right into it. Okay, so the show starts off with Titus O'Neil backstage, and he's on the phone with uh, Akira Tozawa, um, and I guess apparently he's in Japan training um, for the Cruiserweight Championship match, um, and uh, he's talking to Tozawa backstage, he's talking about how when he beats Neville for the, uh, he actually says the WWE Championship, but for the Cruiserweight Championship, he'll get paid a lot of money, then he walks up to, he walks by um, Aliya Dabali, and he talks about, he compliments him on his stuff for looking so expensive. Um, and uh, he says, I bet you like to spend a lot of money. You should spend some investments on the Titus worldwide. Um, and then uh, he continues talking to Tozawa. And then he uh, runs into uh, Mustafa Ali. And uh, he tells Mustafa Ali um, that um, he looked really impressive last week against Drew Gulak. And he says that... Uh, you know, if you start doing stuff like that, they're going to be calling you Muhammad Ali. Shoot like a firefly, sit like a bee. And Muha Mu uh, Mustafa Ali, I almost called him Muhammad Ali. Um, acts like, acts all scared like he's going to hit him. He's like, I ain't going to hit you, man. And then he says, well, I'm about to go out there and address uh, the WWE Universe on 205 Live. And he says, um, let me give you a, a, a ha, ha, ha. And then he does his bulk chant. I thought Titus O'Neil was actually really good here. I, I, I'm guessing he's clearly turning face because I definitely he's been acting like a face the past few weeks. Um, and Titus O'Neil is, I think, doing really well with the Titus brand role. Um, and I actually think it's getting better um, kind of week after week. So um, I thought he, he was actually really f good and funny here. So I thought this was a good segment. All right. So, uh, Continuing with the show, we had uh, Corey Graves and uh, Vic Joseph on commentary for it. Uh, the show starts off with uh, Titus O'Neil coming out to cut a promo. I'm surprised they kind of did kick off the show with this since this is the big title match this Sunday, but whatever. Titus O'Neil comes out and he pretty much talks about the Cruiserweight Championship match this Sunday and how um, Akira Tozawa is going to defeat Neville for the Cruiserweight Championship. And then Neville cut comes out and interrupts him. And, uh, you know, uh, Neville says that uh, he really doesn't care about his clients because uh, let's take a look at what happens to your client this la uh, last night. And he shows the match between uh, Apollo Crews and Braun Strowman, how Braun Strowman destroyed him. And pretty much Neville says that that was your client and he just had a kid and you fed him to Braun Strowman. And he says that all he wants is he wants to take everything from his clients. He wants to take his money and he wants them. Uh, become famous off of them. Um, so uh, Neville gives Titus O'Neil the option to either call Tozawa and forfeit the match this Sunday, or you sit down and commentary and watch what I do to Lince Dorado next uh, during our match. And Titus O'Neil does just that. Um, and uh, yeah, the phone's ringing. Uh, not very really important. But yeah, Titus O'Neil um, does that, and we had the match between uh, Neville and Lince Dorado. I thought they had a fairly good match. Uh, Lince Dorado dominates the first half of it. He hits a wicked kick from the apron, then a hurricane from the apron, um, and he bounces Neville's head off the announcer's table. He goes to charge at Neville, but Neville moves out of the way, and he goes into the steps, and then Neville pretty much destroys Lince Dorado, bounces his head off the table, and he hits a powerball. Then he gets him in the win, hits a power bomb on him, and then the wins a Saturn for the win, because let's say Dorado taps out, and afterwards he has a face off with Titus O'Neil, and then that was it. I thought Titus O'Neil was very good on commentary, and I thought this was pretty good stuff. Um you know, um I thought that they 
really kind of uh, Titus O'Neil and Neville had good chemistry together, and I wonder if this is going to lead to like the because uh, obviously I expect Neville to retain the championship this Sunday, so I wonder what they're going to do with Akio Tozawa once uh, they're going to keep him in the Titus brand or what. But overall, this was a uh, pretty solid stuff. So next, uh, TJP's backstage, and which Swan, which Swan comes up to him and says, um, the, and wonders why uh, TJP requested a match with him tonight, and he asked if he had a problem. And TJP says that there isn't any problem problems. He just wa wanted a nice little friendly competition between him and Rich Swan, and because he says that you've always wanted me to come back to the old TJ Pokins, um. So he says, and he remembers that it was the old TJ Perkins that beat him um, in the Cruiserweight Classic. So he just wants to ha um, have a nice little friendly competition. And, um, you know, uh, Rich Swan says, all, all right then, but just because we're friends doesn't mean I'm going to take it easy on you. Um, because tonight you can't handle this. And then they shake hands and say, bet. Um, I always, uh, I'm kind of liking the direction the storyline's starting to go. I obviously expect TJP to kind of tone heel. I don't know if it's going to happen in this match, but we'll have to wait and see. But overall, this was fine. Um, I thought this was a fairly solid backstage segment. This is, it could actually maybe make TJP not as bland as he is, because it's actually kind of giving him a little bit of personality, I'd say. Okay, so next we had uh, Jack Gallagher versus Tony Nese. I thought this was a actually a pretty good match here. Um, Jack Gallagher does this spot where he keeps hitting roll, rolling Tony Nese around and hitting roll up after roll up on him. I thought that was a, a cool spot. Uh, they, they both get dizzy. And then Tony Nese hands up Jack Gallagher like really rough on the ropes. And then he hits a knee right to the uh, kidneys on him. And then um, Tony Nese dominates the matchup for a while. Uh, he gets him into like a torture rack, um, which I thought was really damn cool. Like he has him like front, uh, with like a, in a reverse torture back where he has it up in a favorite fireman's gallery and he just twerks um, to, uh, Jack Gallagher. And then uh, Gallagher starts to make his comeback. Um, he uh, gets him um, into an armbow, but Tony Nese claps his hands so that way he can't, uh, you know, fully put the move on. So then he turns it into a triangle choke. And then eventually uh, Jack, Tony Nese hands up Jack Gallagher on the second. Uh, top rope. Tony Nese goes for a springboard moonsault, but Gallagher moves out of the way. And then uh, Tony Nese tries to act like his knee is hurt again, like he did before to fool him. But then uh, Jack Gallagher, um, so he backs off like before, but this time Gallagher doesn't get food. He headbutts Tony Nese, and then he hits a drop kick in the corner with Tony Nese for the win. And afterwards, Jack Gallagher is celebrating. Then afterwards, we hear a different type of British music playing. Then on the screen, it shows, like, all the places in Britain. And it shows a history of Great Britain, but then it has the words his, um, Great written out. And uh, we see D. Brian Kendrick up on the stage wearing, like, an old England uniform. Um, and pretty much what happened is he said that he decided to show the people, um, you know, uh, teach them a history lesson in the not-so-Great Britain. So he brings up all these dates and he kind of ties them into Jack Gallagher's fails, you know, like how the Great Britain always failed to take America uh, from them, what was rightfully theirs, but you know how, um, the, and like how Jack Gallagher failed to win the Cruiserweight Classics, failed to win the Cruiserweight Championship. Um, and he said that America uh, rid themselves of British during the revolution. And he says that he is not going to rest until he rids 205 Live of. Jack Gallagher, and this time this revolution is going to be televised. And then afterwards, Gallagher's music plays, and he calls for Kendrick to come out, but he never comes out. And I'm actually pretty interested in it. The Brian Kendrick Jack Gallagher feud. I'm actually looking forward to that. I liked this video that Kendrick did, and I think a lot of people really underestimate the Brian Kendrick. The Brian Kendrick's good, and um, you know, I I like the fact that they're going to do a the Brian Kendrick Jack Gallagher feud. I think that's going to be a put, um, an interesting program, so I like this stuff here. Alright, so next, uh, Noam Dahl is backstage with the doctor, and he pretty much, the doctor tells him that he doesn't need a neck brace, just to keep the ice in his neck, and then it'll be fine. And 
Alicia Fox comes up and uh, he says that at least I got my Foxy back and uh, yeah. Um, then uh, Noam Da says that uh, he's ready to move on from Cedric Alexander and ready to start a new chapter and he says that um, he wants to go after the Cruiserweight Championship um, but then Alicia Fox is like, well we gotta teach Cedric Alexander a lesson first. He's like, no, let's move on to that. It's a new chapter. And then uh, Alicia Fox is like, no, uh, this isn't going to be over until Cedric Alexander quits 205 Live. Because we're superstars. He's made us look like jokes. And then um, Noam Dar was like, okay. He's like, you're so sweet. So Noam Dar wants this to be over. Cedric Alexander wants this to be over. But Alicia Fox doesn't want this to be over. Um, and the WWE obviously doesn't want this feud to be over. And this feud! Nobody cares about this feud anymore. It's been going on pretty much since the inception of 205 Live. I don't care about this whole drama between Noam Dove, Cedric Alexander, and Alicia Fox anymore. Move on! Have Cedric Alexander win the feud, lose, have like a loser quits 205 Live match, and if you want to have Noam Dove win, fine. I don't care. Um, have Cedric Alexander win, I don't care. Get Cedric Alexander to feud and go for the Cruiserweight Championship. This is stupid. Uh, this feud's dumb. It's been dumb since day one. Alright, so then we had the main event. It was uh, TJP versus which one. Uh, this match I thought was a pretty good main event. Nothing special. Fans tried to get themselves over, I think, by chanting, this is awesome. But I don't think they really thought the match was awesome. I just think they were trying to get themselves over. Um, I can't really blame them, though, because this is really a match that's really worth caring about. Like, the match was fine and stuff. It just didn't really... I just... I was actually kind of falling asleep a little bit. Uh, but they both start chain wrestling each other. Rich Swan hits a drop kick. He mocks TJP's dab. And um, then uh, TJP and him get in the ring. Um, Swan hits a Pokemon and sending him in the corner. He goes to charge at him. TJP um, reverses it and drops him down face first. And then TJP acts like he's going to go out on the, on the attack. Um, but he chooses not to. He decides to uh, be genuine about this. So they're trying to just play up the whole fact that they're good friends and stuff. And I feel like that part of the story kind of hurt the math that TJP didn't, seem, didn't really want to go on the attack at times, but TJP dominates the matchup, and he's still, very, but he's still reluctant at somewhat, like he got him in the mood lock at one point, and when Rich Swan got to the ropes, he immediately let go, um, and then TJP starts getting really aggressive once Rich Swan shoves him, he hits a kick to the ribs, a body slam, and then, and then a springboard senton on him, um, covers him, Swan kicks out, then Swan starts to make his comeback, he hits a uh, kick to the head, he hits a, um, he goes for the, um, he hits a Hurricane or which one, um, from the top to turnbuckle on to, uh, TJP. He goes for the Phoenix Splash. TJP moves out of the way and he hits a, uh, Springboard Forearm on, uh, Swan, covers him, Swan kicks out. And then, um, Swan and TJP continue attacking each other. Um, TJP hits a chicken wing gut buster, Swan kicks out, he goes for a detonation kick, uh, TJP hit like a kick to the head, and Swan hits one himself, uh, TJP, uh, Swan hits a Mich modified Michinuku driver, covers him, TJP kicks out, and then eventually they both start exchanging roll-ups on each other, and eventually Swan wins with a roll-up, and afterwards him and TJP shake hands, um, and then that was that. Uh, the match was fine. I'm not really sure. I, I don't really care really enough about this storyline between TJP and with Swan. Um, I just don't really see where the interest is. Um, they, it seems like it, it seems like it could be something decent, but it just kind of seems like eh. You know, obviously I think it's going to lead to probably TJP turning. Well, he's not. He's in the tweener wall right now. But I think he'll go back to being a full-blown heel. Uh, maybe because he, he seemed frustrated that he lost this match. But I don't really care about the storyline all that much. I thought the match was fine, though. 
All right, so my overall thoughts on this show was I actually thought this was a decent episode of 205 Live. I uh, like the stuff they did building up to the Cruiserweight Championship match. Um, I like the stuff. I like the match between uh, Jack Gallagher and Tony Nese. And I also liked um, the Blind Kendricks and Jack Gallagher's little feud. I thought the match between uh, TJP and uh, the what Swan was decent. I just don't really care that much about the storyline. So if I had to rate this show, I'll probably rate it maybe like a 6.5 out of 10 because it was a decent show. Um, because, uh, yeah, um, I thought it was a decent show. As for my stories for each match, for the Neville Lindsay Dorado match, I'm probably going to give that match, um, two and a half stars. I thought it was a good match to make Neville look strong going into the, to the pay-per-view to face Akira Tozawa. Um, for the, uh, Jack Gallagher, Tony Nese match, I'll give that match three stars. I actually thought that was a good, um, entertaining match. And, um, for the, uh, Main event between TJP and uh, which one? I'm probably going to give that match just two stars because it really wasn't anything special. Uh, so that was my review of 205 Live. Please make sure um, to subscribe to my uh, CM Brothers. I know on the Talkinator channels because I uploaded a video. I'm going to be uploading some videos on there throughout the week as well. Make sure to subscribe to this channel because there's more videos to come today. That's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.